Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about the new movie, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. This movie is directed by Ryan Coogler, who directed the first Black Panther as well. I'd say that for me, this film was one of the most anticipated movies of the year, so of course I had to check it out. The synopsis is as follows. Queen Ramonda, Shuri, M'Baku, Okoye, and the Dora Milaje fight to protect their nation from intervening world powers in the wake of King T'Challa's death. As the Wakandans strive to embrace their next chapter, the heroes must band together to forge a new path for their beloved kingdom. So without further ado, let's get into the six things that make a movie great. One, the plot. First and foremost, I think they paid tribute to Chadwick Boseman very well in this movie. And I think the way that they handled his death in the movie was done very maturely, and it fit very well into the character arc of Shuri. But in the opening of this movie, it's made clear that a lot of the nations all over the world see Wakanda as weaker in lieu of the death of T'Challa. So Queen Ramonda is having to remind them that Wakanda is still a powerful country, and that despite their attempts to invade and get access to vibranium, it's not going to happen. However, it appears that there is a machine that is made that can sense vibranium. When vibranium is found at the bottom of the ocean, this cues the entrance of Namor and his people. Namor and his people do not want their existence to be known by the world, so they ask the Wakandans to hunt down the person who made this machine that can sense vibranium and kill them. Obviously Wakanda isn't like that, and the tension builds from there. But this film's main focus was on the character of Shuri, as she's dealing with the death of her brother, and is really trying to move forward. But I really liked the way that this movie flowed, and I think the introduction of Namor and his people was very cool. So plot for me gets a thumbs up. Two is family friendliness. In this movie, there is a lot of action and violence. Namor and his people are not like the Wakandans and they don't feel the need to spare lives. In fact, they take lives quite frequently and don't like to leave witnesses. There's very minimal language and as per usual, Disney decides to check a box at the end of the movie. But for the most part, the reason why this movie is rated PG-13 is for the action and violence and it stays firmly within that rating. So for me, family friendliness gets a thumbs up. Three is acting the script. Almost all of the acting performances were amazing. Namor, Shuri, and Ramonda all delivered really excellent performances. And we got to see a bit more of M'Baku as well, which I liked. There was one character whose acting performance I wasn't a huge fan of, and that was Dominique Thorne, who plays Ironheart. She's not in the movie a ton, but I just wasn't very convinced by her acting performance. Okoye and Nakia both give great performances as well, and the script of this movie shines through the incredible acting performances. There were moments that were very emotional, especially given the death of Chadwick Boseman, and like the actors and actresses have mentioned in interviews, they let this passion and emotion that they have towards Chadwick pour through their performances on screen, and that absolutely was the case here. They did a really good job with this film. Acting and script get a thumbs up. Four is character development. Like I said, most of this film surrounds Shuri, and she gets a ton of character development. Watching her character arc from beginning to end and the character progression that she goes through during that time is really entertaining to watch and I think they did a great job with it. I also like the progression of the Moore's character, who one, is just a super dope character, but two, has a very interesting backstory. So I like the fact that they developed his character enough for us to see that and understand his position and where he's coming from. We get to see some splashes of development with Okoye and Nakia, and Ironheart has as much depth as a kiddie pool. In fact, I'd say that her character got less development than America Chavez did in Multiverse of Madness, but in the end, I think they gave development where it really mattered and they did an excellent job with it. So for me, character development gets a thumbs up. Five is visuals and CGI. Almost all of the visuals and CGI in this movie were absolutely stunning. I will say there was a couple moments that looked a little weird with Namor and the way that he kind of step flies through the air, but other than that it was seamless. The fight scenes were really fun to watch. The underwater sequences were really intense and I think they did a good job of giving you some perspective shots that are pretty accurate with how it feels to be underwater. And it was just really fun to watch. So visuals and CGI get a thumbs up. And six is rewatchability. This movie had a runtime of 2 hours and 41 minutes. But let me tell you, it did not feel that long. This movie was so engaging, so heartfelt, so intense, and the story and character development was so good that while the movie is long, you did not feel like you were sitting there for an overly long time. This movie was really entertaining to watch and the story that goes along with it was incredibly well done. Personally, I thought this movie was better than the first one, but it's really hard for me to compare these films with the absence of Chadwick Boseman. Regardless of that, this movie is absolutely rewatchable. Thumbs up. 
With all these areas considered, I have to give Black Panther Wakanda Forever an 8.5 out of 10. This movie was paced extremely well. The action sequences were really good. Amazing character development, top-notch acting performances, and a story that was very engaging and kept you at the edge of your seat for the entire film. This movie gave me hope that maybe there will be some good that comes from this newest phase of the MCU. Because honestly, I've been losing a lot of hope lately seeing everything else that Disney is putting out. But this movie was semblant of some of the older MCU films that we all grew up loving. And that makes me excited knowing that there's at least one good director out there that gets it. So with that being said, I would definitely recommend going to watch Black Panther Wakanda Forever in theaters. Thank you so much for watching. If you've seen Black Panther Wakanda Forever, please let me know what you thought about it in the comments below. As always, I appreciate your love and support, and I'll catch you guys and gals in the next one.